let's talk about integers and math. Alright, we found ourselves back in Intelligent once more, and we're going to continue the Java introduction over here, this time with integers and math. And while you might say, why do I need math for in programming, it actually is a pretty vital part of a lot of different things that might be coming up in the future. So, of course, a lot of these different functions and methods are going to be known to you. However, I still want to go through everything and basically show you. So, we're going to have two integers over here. So, math can be done with integers, but it, in theory, can also be done with floating point numbers. So, floats and doubles. That also works. In this case, I'm just going to use integers here, but most of the math stuff is going to work for any of them. And we will see a little bit of a difference with floats and integers in a future tutorial as well. But for the time being, let's start with addition. How do we add stuff? Well, we have a sum and the sum is a plus b. So that is all that we have. And this is the addition operator, right? It's basically just a fancy way of saying, right? Take a and plus b and then write that into the sum variable. We can then say system out print line and we can say, for example, sum over here is going to be the sum. There you go. And if we were to execute this, then what we're going to see is, of course, the simple thing that a sum is 300 and 100 plus 200. That does seem to equal 300. I'm pretty happy with that. So that is the addition operator, and we are going to continue with subtraction, which is going to be, well, what is this going to be? Well, this is going to be 1a minus b, and and this is, of course, the subtraction operator. And we can say system out print line, and this is going to be subtraction, which is going to be plus sub in this case. And if we were to execute this, you can see this is minus 100. Once again, negative numbers are included in the integers. So that is no worries at all. Then we can continue with multiplication over here, which is going to be an integer called multi. And this is going to be a times b. And what we can do is once again, system out print line. And we can say multiplication. And that's going to be multi over here there you go and let's just add the division over here as well because why not let's get the division over here there you go division is of course a divided by b in this case and then we can say system out print line and we can say division is going to be division over here we will see a yellow underline under the a divided by b because the result is always going to be zero at first you might be like wait a second that's kind of weird because 100 divided by 200 is one half. So even if we can only represent this as an integer, wouldn't that mean that we would round up to one? No, actually, it does not. So if we were to take a look at this, you can see multiplication is, of course, 20,000. That makes a lot of sense. And then division here is zero, even though that would be one half. But it doesn't work like that because the integers are only whole numbers, right? They're only integers. So that means that one half gets interpreted as zero. If you want a proper output, then we can, for example, say division is equal to b divided by a and then we can say system out print line and we can say division over here and then output it again and if we were to do that then we can see that the, this division is two because of course 200 divided by 100 is two and one very important thing that your math teacher might have told you is that no division by zero that is a very very bad thing because if we were to do that right then we're going to see dividing by zero over here. Now it does say, hey, we're dividing by zero, but it doesn't really throw an error. However, if we were to then, for example, try to print this out, right, division over here, and we were to once again say division, and then we would run this, all of a sudden, what's going to happen is we're going to get a big arithmetic exception over here because we're trying to divide by zero, which of course does not work. So let's comment this out and we're going to be fine. The last thing that is very important and interesting that you might have not seen before is the remainder operator or also called modulo. There you go. And that one is actually quite interesting. So that's going to be the int remainder over here, which is going to be 100 and then the percentage symbol 2. So this basically means 100 modulo 2. And if we were to output this, let's say remaining from 100 divided by 2, that, because that's basically what's going to happen here. How much is going to remain? Well, in this case, it's actually going to be a zero. Now, why do I know this? Let's write this a little bit better like this. There you go. So if we were to take a look at this, right, why is this zero? Well, because... 100 is evenly divisible by 2. The modulo operator 2 is actually used to determine whether or not a number is even or odd. That's a very interesting thing and fact on how we can use this. Because if it's even, it is evenly divisible by 2. And if it's not, then it's going to be a remainder of 1. So if I were to change this to 101, then you're going to see that now it's going to be 1. Interesting. We can also do 100 of 3 here, let's say. And let's just duplicate this with Control D. And let's just... Output the other ones as well. So I just select this, press Control C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it in over here. And we can say 
what are the remainders of these ones and you will find that the remainders here are one and here it is zero because once again what is remaining here is nothing and then here a one is remaining that is the whole idea of modulo and remainders and they can be quite useful as well Right, and lastly, we're going to take a look at some math methods over here. Those are just going to be useful for further calculating some other things. So we're just going to output this. So let's, for example, say we want the absolute number of something that we have. And then we're going to say math. And you can see this is from java.lang. And then here, if we put a dot after the math over here and note that this has to be a uppercase M, very important, then you can see that there are a bunch of different methods that we could call over here. We even have E and pi that we've seen last time as const as well and in this case what i want is the absolute number let's say for minus 100 and of course that's just going to turn up a hundred over here because the absolute number is just a number without the sign in front of it and we can do a couple of other things let's just duplicate this a couple of times so we can for example seal a number we can even around a number and we can also floor a number so this is going to happen by calling the seal method over here let's say and you can see that this actually needs a double because well why would you you know round up or round down a number if it's not a number that has a decimal point right that makes no sense really right so this is rounding up and then this is going to be a rounding this is going to be our rounding over here and then lastly, we also have the rounding down. So instead of seal, this is going to be a round over here. And once again, we're just going to put in the same number just so that we see the different things that are going to happen. And the last one is the floor, which is also going to be 1.23 here in this case. And what we'll find if we run this, you can see sealing over here, we're sealing this to two, we're rounding this to one and we're flooring it to one. Also note what they are returning. If you hover over this, you can basically see a detailed description of the method. You can see it returns the smallest, closest to negative infinity double value that is greater than or equal to the argument that is equal to the method mathematical integer. Very interesting. And this returns a double as well. So that's very interesting. While a round over here returns a long, which is basically just a higher integer number. So you can think of this as an integer over here. And this one also returns a double. Very interesting indeed. Highly recommended. You play around with this a little bit. And that is always the best way to find out well, how, how each of those things work. And the last one here is going to be the minimum and the maximum because those can also be quite important. So this is math.min. And let's just pass in two numbers over here. So there you go. And we can duplicate this once again, control D. And this is then the maximum. And this is, of course, math.max over here. And let's just change the numbers here a little bit. So let's say something like this. Well, what is this going to be? Who knows? Well, let's just take a look. Minimum, of course, returns the minimum of the both of both the numbers passed in. And the maximum returns the higher of the two numbers. But you have seen there are plenty of different methods over here that you can call. So you can just type in math dot and you can see there's a bunch of different methods that you can play around with. I highly recommend you do so and get yourself familiarized a little bit with all of the stuff that can happen over here, especially with the mathematics. Right now, it might not seem like it is that big of a deal, but there are definitely some instances where there's some mathematics that are going to be needed and they might actually be a little bit more complicated than the thing that we have right here. So one example, of course, are going to be vectors, right? So those are three dimensional vectors to basically determine where in space you are and for that you basically need math so do keep in mind that this is a very good foundation to have but that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here next time we'll talk about booleans and logic hope to see you there so yeah